Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the Access of Trend.com. Uh, nightly update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Everybody uh, traded uh, well today. Uh, we'll get to the carnage in a second. Uh, if you are uh, brand new to us, again, thank you very much for finding us, tuning in, spending a few minutes uh, with us. The only thing I ask, if you could be just so kind, take a second and hit that like button, share, subscribe, uh, and all that good stuff. So, not a pretty day, right? Not a pretty day. When I recorded uh, the video on Sunday, if you guys remember on the video, I turn around and go, ah, you know, let's see if we if we get a down 200 open, you know, maybe we can shake it off and, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know, when I woke up this morning, it's pretty bad, man. The Dow was down, uh, Dow futures were down 1,200 points, uh, pretty, some, some pretty steep numbers. Uh, the NASDAQ at one point was down 1,000 points. You had a 12% decline on Bitcoin. Uh, Japan's Nikkei had its worst day since the 1987 crash, was down 12%. It felt like every tech name was down 8, 9, 10%. It was bad. It was really, really bad. Um, you know, it was really bad. And the, the one message I kept on reiterating, especially to the people on social media, I, I think all of us in the webinar, we were good. You know, we were good. I, you know, I took care of it. Everybody was on the same page. We let the channels develop today. Uh, actually, it turned out to be pretty, pretty, you know, pretty okay day. You know, pretty okay day today. Trading channels, not the normal, uh, not the normal see that we know just because of the aggression. But the day turned out to be well. And but the most important message I kept on reiterating, especially on social media, is today's just like any other day. It really is. It's like any other day. Uh, it's just a little more aggressive. There's going to be a lot more, a uh, lot more swings in the market. There's going to be a lot more volatility. Uh, there's going to be less participants. There's going to be less liquidity. Uh, you probably think your head's going to spin off uh, your uh, your shoulders, but you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. The, the key was just take a deep breath, right? Take a deep breath, especially if you have no positions, right? And you want to trade intraday. Make sure the market doesn't put you in a compromising position that you feel uncomfortable with any single uh, any single trade, any single setup, depending on your time frame, and just let the trades come to you. And, and I think the biggest message was just take a deep breath. It's really not that serious because again, you know, traders wake up in the morning, they see NASDAQ down a thousand, you know, the Dow down a thousand, they saw the S&P down 5%. They're like, oh my God, this is the end of the world. And it's really not guys. It's never... Uh, as good as you think when the market is going through euphoria, and it's never as bad as you think when the market is, well, doing something like this. But this shouldn't be, a, you know, this shouldn't be shocking of how today's aggressive sh session played out. All you need to do is refer back to 2020, right? Uh, the pandemic was crazy. We've never seen a pandemic in our lifetime. Everything was closed. We were locked down for two weeks. We couldn't leave the house. Right, craziness, right? But we saw so many, so many air variables that if you woke up this morning, you kind of already had it in your playbook, right? We saw plenty of days during the pandemic that the Nasdaq was down a thousand points, uh, seven percent that they were triggering uh, trading halts, volatility halts. We've seen days uh, during 2020 that that was down three thousand points. So the idea that if you started, you know, during twenty twenty or you know nineteen eighteen, whatever the case may be, again, the whole point of living through something is to put it into your mental Rolodex. So when you see it once again, right? When you see it once again, you know what to do. What do you think? The first time I traded a bear market, I knew what to do, right? Oh, it, it took me two, three bear markets to figure it out. So by the time 20, uh, 2022 came about. Right, it's like riding a bike below the 50-day bearish, right? Sell bias, 85% of the, of the day. So today, you know, it, it, as crazy as it seems, and for all you guys in the webinar, you kind of know what we did here, as crazy as it seems that after the open, it was pretty orderly. It was really orderly. The only difference about today's session is, again, for the, the PS60 theory that I trade on six 60-minute candles throughout the day. 
Today, I was just training on smaller time frames, mostly the five. I was still looking at the six, but mostly the five minute, just because a lot of things were happening on the same candle. Uh, and the most important part is a day like this is so unique that you have to, you know, you kind of have to adapt to what the market is doing. And, you know, to Bull's credit, you know, you got to, you got to give at least, you got to look, you have to give a little bit of, uh, of, of good news, right? A little bit of optimism. The good news is the NASDAQ was down a thousand points and made back pretty much half its losses. That's the good news. It still finished down three and a half percent. Not good. S&P still finished down 3%, not good. The Dow still finished down 2.6%, not good, but at least it showed some sort of fight, right? The bulls came in, some sort of fight, and they closed you know, closer to the highs of the day, even though they weren't, than close to the lows of the day. So that's something to build your hat on. Do I believe today was a bottom? I don't, right? The same way, you know, we talked about, you know, we talked about last week when they talked about well, this was a bottom. I'm like, and my whole point was, well, how could it be a bottom? Think about it. How could it be, it be a bottom if the Nasdaq at that time was still up like 18%? That's the whole point. And you hear people talking about, well, today's definitely the bottom. Today's definitely the bottom. We're still up about 7% for the year. Okay. We're not oversold. You can't be oversold up 7% for the year. Is it over? You know, does it look like it's been uh, kind of a nine, 19 month event? It's only been three weeks, but it feels that way. So I get it. But the ironic part of it is bottoms are made several weeks, several months after the fact. So nobody can guess where a bottom is going to be. But just the way we're trading, just the way the new cycle is coming out, and you got so much stuff going on with Europe and Japan and Iran and Israel with the elections and this and that, you know, it, it, your head could, could spin. But the point is, you know, don't try to be your hero, right? Don't try to figure out where the market's going to be two months from now. If you took advantage today, bought some stocks for 10 years down the line. God bless. I couldn't tell you what's going to happen in 10 minutes, let alone 10 years. But again, if you took today's opportunity to buy some stocks that you feel are cheap, well, again, that's great. Ironic about today's candle is we actually closed higher than the open, right? And you can't really, you can only say that once in the last three weeks. So that, again, that's something to build upon. Uh, I would love to see a scenario for tomorrow because if you guys remember on the weekend video, we kind of talked about this. At some point this week, we're going to see a four or 500 point move on the NASDAQ. It's just, you know, again, when you have a move, uh, when you have a market going from 503 on the queues to 444 in three weeks, you're, you're going to get, it's inevitable, you're going to get a 500 point rally. The best case scenario, what I would like to see tomorrow, what I would really, really like to see tomorrow to make our game plan high probability, right, is to see a gap down today, a gap down again tomorrow, okay, trap late or aggressive late shorts, considering we closed today higher than, the, than, than we opened, go red to green, start taking out today's channels. And if we can start doing that, if we can start getting above today's channels, then yeah, we could see a rally back on the queues all the way back to this 445 supply. Again, it's not out of the realm. It's not out of the you know the, the degree of possibility. This is what happens when you have a rubber band market and you're stretching things out, stretching things out, stretching things out. Eventually, things have to snap back. Does it have to play that way? No. We can gap down tomorrow, go down another thousand points, and people are slicing their wrists. I get all that, but again, we need to put everybody in at least. Of a reality that trading both sides of the market is going to be important. The, the reason why I'm hoping we get kind of um, a sell-off gap down reversal back to the upside, because 99.9% .9 of the stocks right now are closer in a weird way, are closer in today's top range they are on the bottom. So for example, for Tesla, for, to be, for me to take Tesla short tomorrow, this thing would need to lose 182, okay? The stock is 16 point higher. You follow what I'm saying? For me to look at Apple, and by the way, it held up fairly well today. For me to turn around and go, oh, I want to take Apple short, it would have to be below 196, right? We're talking about 17 points ago. So my point is just based where everything is closing. Again, I'm not a bull, I'm not a bear. I'm just looking to where the data is pointing to. And if you look at the majority of stocks, you're going to see the majority of names did close with green candles, right? Apple, green candle. Right? Tesla, green candle. NVIDIA, green candle. AMD was actually green. Who had this on their bingo card? Right? Who had AMD actually green on the bingo card today? But that's my point. Stocks closed higher than the open, a perfect world. And again, we don't live in a perfect world. 
perfect world. We gap down tomorrow, trap late and eager shorts, go green, take out today's channels, and we have a gap and go move into the next supply zone of the queues roughly around, uh, roughly around, what did I say here? Roughly around that uh, 445 uh, distribution into uh, supply. Now, if we gap up tomorrow, right? If we gap up tomorrow, I do believe there will be one time, right? One time that they're going to take a lot of names red, okay? Just because, again, you don't buy gap ups. That's the whole point. We've been talking about this three weeks, and you can see the data backing up what I've been saying, right? We've had literally two days of the market closing higher than it opened. You can see there's literally two candles on the screen here, one today and one from three days ago. So don't buy the gap up tomorrow, okay? Don't buy the gap up. If you want to get long stocks tomorrow, look at their ranges for today, right? Look at the top of the range today for AMD. Look at the top of the range today on Apple. Look at the top of the range today on NVIDIA, right? That is your point of reference. So if stocks can reclaim today's top of their channels, then you can go long. But by no means at the open do you buy stocks. You're going to get, I'm telling you, you're going to be red in your position the first minute and a half of your trade. You want to buy stocks after 10 o'clock because 10 o'clock is the first channel, at least on the PS60 theory. At least after 10 o'clock, you're getting an opening range high. You're getting an opening range low on the initial move at the market open. And if stocks get trapped, right, especially if shorts get trapped, and it is a day that we are going to dead cat bounce for a four or 500 point move, you want to be long these stocks on the opening range highs above the 10 o'clock channel, above the 10 o'clock turn. And tomorrow, again, I'm expecting a very, very aggressive day. Uh, I'm expecting stocks to be all over the place tomorrow. Uh, you have no business, right? No business being long or short, especially if you're flat. If you have no business to be long or short stocks in the first five, 10 minutes of the day, let the noise die out. Let the you know uneducated traders, the uh, emotional traders be all over the place. Short, long, up, down. Let the noise die out. Let the market kind of take a deep breath. Let the trend develop. Let the personality of the day develop. And if we can start building above the 10 o'clock opening range highs, then I think we have a legitimate shot of getting a four or 500 point bounce for the next day. If not, guess what? We still are in a sell cycle. And there's still, it turns out to be the opposite. You know, if these stocks are putting in opening range lows, then after 10 o'clock, guess what? I want to be involved with those opening range lows. So that's the point of trading channels, guys. That's the point of not having a bias. That's the point of having a game plan. You want to see that game plan play out, but there's no guarantee what I'm saying is going to play out in my direction. Yes, in a perfect world, do I get a gap down, reversal, taking out today's top of the range and we explode for the next four hours? Yeah, it's a perfect world. Guess what? We don't live in a perfect world, so why should you trade uh, in a perfect scenario. Do we get lucky if that happens? Absolutely. I'd be really, really happy. I think a lot of you guys would be uh, echoing my sentiment. But the point is the market can do whatever it wants. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of news events. There's a lot of geopolitical news on the table. So you have to adapt to everything. Continue to trade smaller size, quarter, third, half size, depending what you're doing, rejections, balances, so forth and so on. Because again, today we actually had a pretty solid day considering. Uh, you know, my first trade of the day didn't work out well. I short, wasn't even the second trade of the day. I shorted, uh, I shorted Tesla for the first rejection, didn't reject, quarter size, didn't reject, lost about $1.70. And then you started seeing things getting really, really stronger. Again, you adopt, right? You adopt. Uh, then Tesla got stronger, went up about $1.50. Uh, then NVIDIA got stronger, uh, went up about a dollar fifty. There was a lunchtime pivot on on Nvidia. Went up about a dollar and change. So there was a really nice move and great call by uh, great call uh, by Matt on 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 Apple. Right here, here's my point. Right here's my point. Here's a sneaky pivot here. It stopped twice. It stopped twice today at the same level here. Right, it stopped twice. And once it took out the level here, it absolutely exploded. So you can find pivots to the upside. You can find pivots to the downside especially with this exaggerated uh, news filter, right? But the point is, let these things develop. Let these things develop. Don't guess. Don't anticipate. Don't try to be a hero. I'll start tweeting things out when you think it's going to happen. You sound like a fool. Nobody knows what's going to happen, right? The price action doesn't know what happens until it confirms a channel, and that's the name of the game. The key is breathe, right? We're going to have a lot of volatility tomorrow, probably have more volatility the next day. But the key is adopt to the volatility. Don't be a hero, don't be stupid. Don't be naive. Don't try to you know, play the role of I'm the best. I'm the this. I'm the this. Be a trader. 
Be a professional, okay? Be a professional. No matter what you do, be a professional. And the most important part is stay in business. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I will see you all in the field tomorrow.